We were working between the Price is Right and the Family Feud offices. At the beginning, it was a shoestring budget. The production value was not great at all. We were just a little summer show. So everyone's expectations were pretty low. The reason there were two hosts for the first season was because they had two guys in the UK that did it and they wanted to do the same thing here. I was a 25 year old kid doing radio and a couple little things on television. I was so excited to get the opportunity to host a primetime show. Whether people watched it or not, it was a great gig. Hi, I'm Ryan Seacrest. And I'm Brian Dunkelman. Or with the new Fox series, American Idol, here in LA, kicking off the biggest music talent search in history. We didn't know what to expect. Paul and I were sitting there, the first two contestants in. When it's cold outside, I've got the middle of May. Well, I... What? Where? What is this? Where are we? What the hell is this show? What's going on? My girl. Steven, my Steven, girl. Steven, Steven, stop. That was terrible. I mean, seriously terrible. I remember after the second kid in, we took a break because like, well, hang on, this is insanity. If you want to achieve what you want to achieve, you will not do it with your voice. I thought I was doing people a service by saying to someone, you can't sing, so go and do something which you're good at. Don't look at me like that. All a freak now. I quit eight times the first day. <laughs> this guy, he can have 100,000 lessons. He cannot sing. I disagree. I don't think anyone should be told they can't do anything, no matter what. Yeah, but Paula, he's 18 years old. He's having an opportunity to sit in front of three people from the Simon, music Simon, I understand what you're saying, but I disagree with what you No, I think you're patronizing him. I'm not patronizing him at I all. Do. It was real. It was genuine. There was no staged arguments. I just was shocked that Simon could really be as rude as he was. That's been around in Hollywood forever. It's just that in America, people say it behind your back not in front of your face. Back then, no one was turning up for auditions. I remember in Seattle running around a mall, handing out flyers, begging people to come because no one had heard of it, no one knew what it was. In order to be seen by anyone, it took hours. And people were just singing at the top of their lungs. And I thought, I don't want to be here. I almost got out of line. Okay. So we've done all these auditions. We've seen some crazy, funny, wild people. We're at like some VFW hall in Dallas. The day the music died. It just did. We were having a terrible day. And I'm thinking, God, what am I doing this for? They're all useless. Hello. Goodbye. And the show's going to be a disaster at the end. This is unique. I like this. Is I that a skirt? This. No, I mean, it used to be my pants though, and I made it. Literally, my place in LA and it just burned down. I'm out of money, everything's gone. I lived in my car for three days. I just thought, if this pays my bills, it's worth it, you know, because I had nothing at that point. She tried to make it as a singer in Los Angeles and she'd gone back to Dallas and worked in a bar. I was really kind of intimidated to walk into the room and all these girls and guys walking out in tears, like, what's happening in this room? We have Ryan B. All righty, shall I just start? Hello, Kelly. Hello. At last, my love has come along, my Lord. When Kelly came in, I knew, and I think we all knew, we got a winner. And life is like a song. I could not believe the power that comes from her voice. That girl who had amazing pipes. She couldn't be anybody else but the girl from Texas that loves to just flat foot sing. A dream that I can call my own. Okay, the next song. 